So every morning when I wake up, I do a little like stretching kind of dynamic warm up routine at home. And then I do a little more um, activation type stuff once I get to the gym. But I start with just a stretch. Um, I kind of stretch my hammy straight on and then to the side. And something I've learned is when I'm stretching, you don't want to stretch to be painful. So it doesn't really matter how far you get um, in a stretch. You just kind of want to stretch but not make it painful and um you know some people when you some people say stretching can be bad are you okay you can come down you can come down and stretch with mama yeah you want to come down and help her do it yeah you do um so you know stretching can sometimes if you stretch a ton right before you run it's not always uh some people there's a debate about if that's good or bad some people say you should do dynamic warm-ups, you shouldn't do static stretching. So I do this stretch, you know, it's over an hour before I'm gonna run. So this is just, just kind of like wake up, get the body stretched. And then I like to do a stretch where I'm down on my knees and a lot of times take Stanley's toy. I put my rear foot up on something and stretch and I try to then tilt my uh, pelvis towards my belly button um, and that really gets uh, stretched just kind of like in these hip flexors and adductors and a lot of times you should you can hold stretches people say 30 seconds um, or so I sometimes do less sometimes do more just kind of see in the morning like how my body's doing how I'm feeling if something feels tight I'll you know maybe stretch more than once in that area or I'll move on this so I have my hands by one foot that's out in front and I try to really just elongate my spine um, I pretend that someone is pulling my head with a string um, and I try to just get my back nice and long so I'll do that on one side, and I'll bring the other foot up, do it on the other side. So I do this one anywhere from two to five times each side. And then I'll get into a little more of a dynamic warm up, which I've talked about. I've talked about a lot of these um, in our activation video. Um, and I used to do these at the gym, but now I just do them at home. It's something I can spend a little more time with Sam. Um, Sam can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with just uh, hammy kicks. Um, and I just alternate legs. And I try to do these at least five each leg. And as you can see, like it would be nice to have like one long straight away. But I don't have that right here because we have a couch and toys. So I just kind of move around where I can make it happen. Then the next one I do is I come up into a high knee, make sure I have this toe pointed up, and then I come down into a half lunge. And this really, I also put my arm up. I try to really get the stretch um, in the calf and again that hip flexor. And I try when I come up to really be in a nice runner's position. Um, try to just get the body used to coming up high knee, high toe, and then back down and get into that stretch. After I've done that a couple times, I do the same thing where I come up high knee, high toe, back into the lunge, but instead of just stretching, Upward, I take my arms out and I go to the side and I rotate to the side where the leg is in front. And this I always feel because I have a pretty tight T-spine. My back is a lot of times tight, so this really helps kind of get that opened up. And then this one is kind of really similar to what we just did. Um, but we... It's again just to open up that T-spine and I'll just kind of get in that lunge position and this time I just have my arms up and I'll just twist to the side, you know, three to five times and then I'll twist up and to the side. And this just really stretches out the back a little bit after I've been sleeping all night and just a lot of times we don't have this 
this sort of rotation. You know, a lot of times when we're running, we just go uh, front and back, and we don't a lot of times go to the side. So it's nice to just kind of open that up. Then I will go into a high knee. And I've been doing lately, I bring the knee up. I try not to bend down to it. Um, I try to just bring the whole knee up, knees up, toes up, grab and hug. And I'll do three of those each side. And for me, what I really work on is making sure that when my foot's on the ground for these, I have good foot position. So I'm working on keeping the ball of my big toe, the part, like the ball of my pinky toe and my heel on the ground and also not letting my arch collapse. So that's what I'm focusing on on my foot level, but I'm also getting a nice stretch in. And I'll do three per side, then I'll add a little bit of a um, calf race, I guess I would say, at the end. So after I've done three, the next three, I bring it up and I just end by going up on my toe. So it's just kind of a little bit more like I'm running. You just get a little more of that run motion. Now I do where it's kind of like when you do butt kicks. I'll bring my leg up. Again, I'm focusing on that leg that's down with uh, having that have good surface area, good control, um, you know, a little bit of balance work. And this again, I'm trying not to bend at the hip to reach my leg, but instead trying to bring my leg up to me. And I wanna grab my hand that's grabbing my foot. I wanna grab right on the, let's say the meat of that ankle right there. You don't wanna grab, up. I don't like to grab at the toe. I like to grab right at that ankle. And again, I'll do about three, and then I'll do three each side with a little step up. And you can, if you want, put your arm up on these. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Now we're gonna do tea, uh, walking T, which I'm really bad at. Um, I actually think this is one of the best exercises. I do it sometimes post run as well with a weight in my hand. Um, I'm really, I'm not perfect at it, so I wouldn't use me as the ideal example, but I come up in runner's pose um, where you have your arm up, your leg and knee and toe up. And then you're gonna come down uh, vertically and what you really want is you don't want your hips to be uneven you want to try to get them really even so you're like a flat table like somebody could put something on you and then i like to come up again into a runner's position at the end and i a lot of times lose balance i'm not very good at keeping this straight so it's definitely something i need to work on and if you're struggling at the beginning i suggest just holding on to something very lightly and it's a lot easier than you can kind of feel on your back. You can look in the mirror if you're at the gym to see if you're being flat or if you're tilting. And when I do this post run with weight, I have a weight um, in the arm that's moving. And then a lot of times it ends with a little push up. And this also, I feel like for me, it stretches my hamstrings. It works on the balance. It's a really good exercise. The more you run, I think the harder it is to do. So that's why doing it daily really helps keep your body uh -huh, able to do the motion. Okay, um, so then I also, I just do like a, a side lunge. Um, so I just go out to the side and back to center. And I just do this about five times, you know. Um, I think ideally, when I learned this from my PTs, taken a bunch of different PTs, um, suggestions, and use the ones that work well for me, make me feel warmed up and ready to go. And they always say to do 10 um, at least, but I normally only do five. Um, I find that for me, that's about enough, um, just to kind of get that body moving. The next one that I do, I pretend that I have hurdles. If you want to set up hurdles, you can. I just think it takes a little more time and you can pretend that you have hurdles and I have them. Um, if you're going to set them up, set them up high, so they're highest uh, marking, and then you're going to try to go underneath them. So, and you want to really bend at the hips, so I get down, low, try to keep that chest up, 
and I'm just trying to get down low and pretending that I'm going under a hurdle every time. But you wanna really just keep that chest up, bend at the hips. So sometimes then as well, I will do just a little toe touch. Just kind of get those hammies a little bit more ready to go. After I've done kind of my standing stuff, I get down and I will um, do, like a lot of people know how to do the cat cow, I think it's called in, uh, is that what it's called in I, yoga? I, I, don't, a... I don't know the names of things. Um, but this, a lot of people do just stretch out the back. And then I try to get in a position where my back is flat or, or neutral, um, which isn't always exactly strat, flat, but in a neutral position. And um, I try to take my hands that are in the ground and turn them to kind of really get them locked in. And then I bring a foot out and I try to push as hard as I can um, with my heel towards the ground. And this this is more of like an activation thing and this is one of, I do two activations before I leave the house and then I do some um, once I get to the gym. But this one is, I, uh, I find it really difficult. It looks kind of easy, but if you do it right, it's difficult. It's working, my core is activating right now along with my glute. And those are the things that are activating. If you find it really easy, which I don't, um, you can add things like, Put your arm out. You can also add a motion with your legs so you can go down in a circle. Um, you go down, over, up, over, down, over, up, over. And the whole time your glute is activated again and your core is activated. And you want to try to keep it as sturdy as you can. And a lot of times I have to reset, try to find neutral, get the upper body locked in position. I tighten my core and then I lift and I hold. Um, sometimes I can only do like a four second hold. If it's also too easy, you can also lift your other toe off the ground. So when you start this, you can have your, both your toes off the ground, just your knees and your hands as stability. And when you come up, it's hard you guys, if you do it correct. If it's not hard, I don't think you're doing it correctly. Um, it really works your abs your glutes, and I think it's a really good um, activator because when you run, you want your glute and your opposite side of your core to be activated, and this is something that helps mimic that, which is what you're gonna do in running. <sighs> okay, so then, for me, um, you know, we've, I talk, I've talked a lot about um, activating your glute and having your glute activated when you run and I do a lot of those activations at the gym right before I run so immediately before I run so that my glutes are fired for the run so that five minutes later when I start they're on and they're firing um, but something else I like to activate is just my core I think sometimes if you are having a hip drop sometimes you think it's because of glute weaknesses but it may be because of your core not firing as well. And if you've had a child like I have, sometimes your core is hesitant to activate. So in the morning, I just get down and all I do is I do a, I'm sure this has a great name too as well, but I can't remember. I just do toe taps or toe touches like this um, down, just making sure my back is staying neutral on the ground. I bring one leg down, try to keep the other leg as stable as possible, not moving. And something that I struggle with is keeping my my rib cage down. Um, so I think about pulling the rib cage down, but I also, to help, can put my hands, grab onto something. So I'm grabbing onto this, uh, what would you call this, dresser we have? Yeah. <laughs> um, and that really helps me bring my ribs down to my belly button. Um, again, something when you are have a baby, your ribs, automatically move up and you have to work on keeping those ribs down. I do my, this is another thing for the spine, the T-spine opener. So for me, I start by just kind of, I lay on my side um, 
knees bent, arms straight, and I start by moving my arms forward and back. And then I move my knee with my arm. Then I go opposite direction. So my knee comes back when my arm's forward. And I don't do, you know, I do probably four or five of these each. Then I lay and I do, I open up my uh, spine. And for this, you wanna try to keep your knees down on the ground and you wanna try to get this shoulder down to the mat or the ground as well. And this is something I actually like when Stanley crawls on me and helps me because he can kind of get this shoulder to go back more and it really opens up that spine and um, just gets that side rotation a little bit better. I hope you guys enjoyed watching what I do at home before I leave for a run. I think, you know, I used to do this at the gym, but the reality is I know that I can spend some extra time at home with Stanley, and a lot of times as well, I'll run from the house, so I think that's really relatable to, to most of the general public, um, is just kind of getting done what you can can get done in your house and as you can see just make it work um, you know ideally you could have a big long stretch of turf field to do this on but you can also just do it in your home and it's super simple super easy so I hope you guys like this video we made this one um, you know just long so that you could follow along step by step by step and and do it with me so I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you guys next time